Hi, welcome to lecture on environmental adaptation for animals. Now we will start the thing on the hormonal control of our body functions. And this will lead us step by step on the uh, annual changes, so the seasonal changes, for example, in the reproduction of animals. But let's start on the hormones. We have a critical bear, and the bear has already catch the salmon. And when it's eating the fish, it will get the fat as a nutrition from from the from the from the food, and digest it and absorb it into circulation, and store the fat as a nutrition in in the fat cells. And because this bear is going for the hibernation, it will need a lot of these fat stores. So that's why it's making these fat cells insensitive for insulin. So you can modulate your body functions either by modulating them with hormonal control or by modulating them by the sensitivity of the receptors for the hormonal control. And that's uh, what we already learned quite much on the, on the melatonin. And we have different kind of ways to send information for the next cells. First of all, we have neurons where the neurotransmitters are diffusing only five mi few mi micrometer across the synaptic cleave, and they are affecting practically immediately, perhaps 10 millisecond uh, interval, because the dif uh, distance is so short. And also it means that, okay, it's very limited space so if you have enzyme there to cut the neurotransmitter in smaller pieces you will get rid of it very fast so it's very sm short interval of having these neurotransmitters that can be released for example in e one vesicle that is transported through the presynaptic uh, membrane and and in some cases these neurotransmitters can also be uptake back to the presynaptic neuron. Then the other way is to have these endocrine cells. So you can release the hormones, the messengers in the circulation. And for example, in human body, we have about five liters of, of, of uh, blood. That means that, okay, it will take more time to get the signal in the target cell. And also it means that, okay, if you are diluting the these hormones in five liters, the concentration can be quite low, even uh, in picomole per liter. And although it's, the messenger is now circulating all around your body, it's affecting only in places where there are these receptors. And these receptors must be very sensitive, so they are sensing that, okay, now there's uh, one or two picomole per liter of this, this uh, uh, signaling molecule, or and and at the same time it has to be very se se uh, selective, so it, it's not sensing anything else. Then, usually, in our, our the traditional way of thinking on the endocrine cells is that okay they are in the discrete organs called no, uh, endocrine glands, so they are uh, releasing the hormones together. And, but it's, it's not always that way. Then we have these mixtures like neuroendocrine cells. We already learned the, these in the uh, case of, of the melatonin release. So we can have neurons that are not having a synapse, but they are releasing the signal in the uh, circulation, and they are just working like endocrine cells, and they are just called that's why in neuroendocrine cells. And the good point is that, okay, neuroendocrine cell, you can make a synapse in the other end of the cell, so you can have a, a quite fast control on this. But the bad, good bad thing is that, okay, uh, these neuroendocrine cells, they might be that they are, uh, there's not, not so many of them that are together releasing the hor uh, hormones in, in the circulation. So, and so, but the, anyway, the basic mechanism is pretty much the same as in the endocr endocrine 
cells. And then we have short distance signals. So we can have uh, paracrine and autocrine signals, so they are uh, sending message messages to the next cells. Maybe uh, the distance can be 10 cells, but anyway, it's, it's microscopic and not in the circulation. Or it can even even regulate itself, but by releasing something that is then of having receptors in the same cells. So to make it as simple as possible, we have circulation, and usually we think that okay, when we have uh, endocrine cells are releasing hormones, so there's addition of the hormones in the circulation, and that will affect on the hormone level in the circulation. So the hormone stays there forever and by adding more hormones then you are increasing the hormone concentration in the circulation. And of course then you can regulate the secretion by either by other hormones that are affecting in that, or, that organ or there can be some neural uh, connections that are saying saying that okay now you should uh, release it or as in insulin it's just measuring the uh, uh, ATP concentration in the cells but at the same time when there's addition there's also removal so what we have to remember that okay the uh, these hormones can have quite fast metabolic destruction meaning that okay to have the hormone concentration constant, uh, then you have had to have secretion all the time. Otherwise, it, uh, uh, the hormones will be uh, lost in the in the in the circulation. And this is also something that we learned already in the uh, in the melatonin. So it stays there for maybe for ten minutes or something like that. But one thing that we haven't yet uh, talked is that actually these hormones can be also modulated. So sometimes we release them as a pre-hormones that will major in the circulation. And I think there was some, some kind of mention on, on the uh, melatonin on that, but even better example is in the thyroid hormones. Uh, so it's released as, as T4 and it's modulated to T3 to have triiodide and then it's more effective. So then it, you can have hormones and if you modulate them the concentration is not changing but they are more or less effective. What about different kind of hormones? We have steroid hormones that are produced from cholesterol and it will start in the mitochondria to produce this uh, pregnenol. And this metabolite is then moved the smooth endoplasmic reticulum to produce different kind of steroid hormones. You can see that they have the basic structure of these is pretty much the same. The, double the side of the double bones is a little bit different than the largest differences are there on the top on this carbon chain. And in the circulation, the half time of these is around one hour. So even when having a testosterone or estradiol, you should you think that okay, there's always these, but it means that it's just because there's always these because it's also released all the time, because otherwise it will be lost quite fast. Then there are usually hormone. So the most hormones that we have is the peptides or proteins. And okay, you know that okay, they are formed from uh, a chain of amino acids, and the length of this amino acid chain it can vary a lot. It can be as short as three amino acids, or two hundred amino acids, like in growth hormone. This is a protein. And over here we have two different examples. So in the gonadotrophin releasing hormones, there's about 10 or a little bit less amino acid. Then in the insulin, you have two different chains that are binded together with sulfur. 
So there are cues stains that are making these sulfur bridges. And we have several typical examples of these. So for example, in insuline, or then in the uh, sea stars, there is a gamut shedding hormone, and and in, in the insects there is a diuretic hormone that is also working as a as a peptide. And they are metabolized very fast. So the typical half half time in, in the circulation is only for a few minutes. So that's why you have much faster regulation in, with these peptide hormones because uh, there's only very transient. Then the third group of hormones are these amine hormones and they are modulated from amino acids. We have from, we can modulate tyrosine or tryptophan and typical uh, neurotransmitter is, is different kind of catechol amines. They are produced from uh, tyrosine and in the vertebrates we are using them also as hormones. And then in the tryptophan we already learned in the in the previous uh, settings that okay previous week that okay the melatonin was produced by serotonin well this serotonin is produced first from tryptophan. But then there's one group, okay, uh, we have catechol amines, and quite near them there are also these uh, yodoturonines that have these yod, and they are, they are only affairing in, in, in the vertebrates. And these molecules are very long-lasting, so that's why their metabolism is very slow in the circulation. So if you have, for example, tyroxine, that will last for days in the circulation. Thank you.